What's up, everybody? This is Johnny Basement, and we are back here in the basement for another review of the AFL and the Grand Final. This Grand Final, 89 uh, between the Hawthorne Hawks and the Geelong Cats. This has been told to me through the comments, through my journey, guys, my journey, which has only been about a couple of months before the uh, new season started. This American's journey, first season in the AFL. Guys, Aussies, thank you so much for all the comments that you guys have left for me. Helpful. Some guys are critiquing me. All of them I love. Thank you for them all. Guys, this one has been requested for quite some time now, so it's about time we get into this before round three sets off this week, which is a huge match between Collingwood and Richmond. I did a preview of that already. Please check that video out and tell me your thoughts on there as well. Please subscribe, hit the bell notice, and the like button. Drop your comments, as we just spoke about down below. You'll also find a link to this video in those comments down below, so you can just watch it without me yammering away. Guys, I looked up a little history on this before I even watched this, which is going to be with you guys right now. I haven't watched the video yet. You guys know that have been following along with me. I like to know a little background before I get into just being, oh, let's just pull up the video and all watch it together. No, I'm into this sport. I'm a student of the game. I'm a real student of the game, and I like to know history. I love sports history. Baseball, basketball, football, hockey, those are my sports in America. I know my team's histories. I love knowing these things. AFL is my project now. Footy is my project. So I'm diving in. I'm diving in deep with this. I mean, come on, guys. Look, I even have this. I even have this. I read up on stuff, man. I, I take a lot of pride in my sports, man. I don't like being a casual fan. Anyway, enough of that garbage. Let's get into the 89 grand final right now. What I found interesting about this, the Hawthorne Hawks coming in their seventh consecutive grand final. This is their seventh consecutive one. They had just completely waxed, blew the doors off the Melbourne Demons in 1988 grand final. 152 to 56, outscoring them, outscoring them 22 goals to six, if I remember correctly. 22 goals to six, absolute wax waxing of the Melbourne Demons the year before. So now they're coming into 1989, they get the Geelong Cats. They had failed previously in their other title defenses. In 1984, Hawthorne had a chance to get a title defense against the Essendon Bombers. They dropped that one. They get another chance to uh, defend their title. In 1987, the Carlton Blues said, no way, not against us. You ain't getting two in a row against us. So here come the Geelong Cats. Three times a char charm for Hawthorne? You guys already know it was. What I found interesting, though, in this match, because I'm told this is one of the greatest grand finals ever. So for me to look into this before I react to the video, well, what makes it one of the greatest grand finals? It can't just be a close score and the physicality in the game. It can't be just that. It's got to be more to it to be a great grand final. Yes, a score has a lot to do with making games. I don't care what sport it is, making a game great. Wow, that was a tight game. There was so much more underlying in this game. So much more. Dermot Brereton apparently is this massive forward and enforcer. When I see the word enforcer, I immediately think of the guys from the old school enforcers in hockey. You mess with our star player, we got a guy on the bench that's 6'3", 250 pounds that's going to come out and you're going to have to deal with him about it. He's going to have something to say about it. You knock our star player around because in hockey, usually the star player, fast, quick, can score goals, generally not fighters. The enforcer... Generally not fast, not quick, doesn't score a lot of goals, but he's good with these. He's good with these. So when I think enforcer, that's what I'm thinking. So Dermott apparently was a target that the Geelong Cats had before the game even started. Mark Yates came out and steamrolled him. Steamrolled him in the beginning of the game, which apparently was the Geelong Cats target. They wanted to be physical against this Hawthorne Hawks team. Mark Yates ran right through him, broke his ribs, bruised his kidney, and the dude stayed playing in the game. He stayed playing in the game. That is inspirational. That is the reason that I'm assuming in the box score when I looked at it, why the uh, Hawthorne Hawks were up 52-12 to 12 at the end of the first quarter. It's got to be because their teammate went down with broken ribs and a bruised kidney and said, no, 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 I'm playing. I'm playing. That is inspiring. That probably picked the team up. That made it look like this was going to be a blowout. But the Geelong Cats said, you ain't blowing us out. You're not embarrassing us like you did to the Demons last year. That's not happening. Not happening. It just seemed to be, from what I was reading in the history, that these uh, 
that the team was really focused on getting him out of the game. Maybe that wore the Cats out in the beginning. I don't know. That's just my opinion. There were some other great things that happened in this game as well. Gary Ablett, I found this interesting. Gary Ablett scored nine goals in the game, tied a 61-year record from the 1928 Grand Final. 61-year record for nine goals in the Grand Final. Now, that was done by Gordon Covington. I hope I have that name right, Gordon Covington. Anyway, those, that record still stands to this day, nine goals in the Grand Final. Guys, if that's wrong, please let me know in the comments. From my studying and my looking up stuff, which I spend a lot of time on, if that's wrong and that's not still the record, please let me know. As far as I know to this point, that's the record tied. And he also won, Ablett also won the Norm Smith medal for this game. He's the second guy since Rioli, Maurice Rioli did it, to win that on the losing team. The second guy. Now, is there anybody else? Please tell me if there's anybody else that's won that on the losing side. He's, to this point in the 89 Grand Final, Gary Ablett is the second guy to Maurice Rioli to win that for the losing team, the Norm Smith medal. Interestingly enough, in the Super Bowl, you guys know I love throwing analogies in from time to time. Chuck Howley in Super Bowl V was the only, to this day, to this day, the only uh, MVP, Super Bowl MVP on the losing team. Super Bowl V, when the Dallas Cowboys lost to the Baltimore Colts 16-13, to Chuck Howley, linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys, won the MVP. So it's interesting that in, in the AFL as well, it's not something you see very often where you get a guy winning a medal for a losing team. So that means this was one hell of a game. A lot of stuff going on in this game. Let's get into it right now, guys. I'm not going to yammer away anymore. This is an interesting match. I'm looking forward to watching this video because I haven't seen it yet. I just gave you what I just did today. I spent a lot of time on this today to look some things up. Let's get into it right now. 89 grand final. This was also, uh, well, whatever. Let's just get into it. We'll talk about it during it. Let's go. <laughs> Down by Burke. This is Buse. Second opportunity for Buse. Down towards the half forward line. Ablett's in front. Here's Ablett right there. Very interesting units in that first bounce because Gates came off the wing and went straight for Dermot Burke. Dermot's down on his knees, as you can see. Up, oh, there it is. Right off the bat. Didn't they just show. Uh, Very interesting units in that first bounce because Gates came off the wing and went straight for Dermot Burke. He's talking about it right now. Brereton, 23, is right there. Is that Mark Yates, 23 for uh, Geelong? Please let me know. But he's already down, so his ribs have already been broken and a bruised kidney, and the dude still played. That is just fire to me. That's hot. I love that. I love that in a player. We had a guy, uh, Ronnie Lott, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, st starting strong safety for the uh, San Francisco 49ers. He would not miss. Interestingly enough, it was in the 80s as well. He had a jammed up pinky, and he would not miss the playoffs of the Super Bowl because his hand wasn't closing correctly or whatever else. He had his finger amputated, guys. Amputated so he would not miss being a part of the playoffs of the Super Bowl. Wow, who does that? Those are the type of players that inspire teammates. Guys like this, I respect the hell out of that. Let's get back into it. Dermot's down on his knees, as you can see. Gary Hamlet will go very close from here, from about 52 meters long. Boom, what a shot! Now this is reminiscent. Oh, he's hurt. Colin Dermot Burton down. I mentioned how Yates came through the center, didn't have eyes for the ball, just went straight at Burton and has put him down. A bad miss for Hawthorne because he's the one who can really get them going. And watch this on replay. You see, Yates. Oh, he did go right at him. Oh, that was intentional all day. The announcer said it too. He didn't have his eyes on the ball, Yates. He went right at him, man. Oh, that was personal. Have these two guys had problems in the past? Let me know because that looked personal. I relate this, believe it or not, guys, I relate this game more to hockey than I do the NFL. Hockey is nonstop. The clock keeps running. And when there's personal beef out there, or you'll see a skater in hockey go right after somebody and the puck is way over here. Like, that look, I mean, I relate this more to hockey, believe it or not, than I do the NFL. The clock keeps running. There's not a whole lot of calls. And there's no timeouts, not a lot of ads. Very similar. This is still a faster game. But I'll tell you what, hockey is right there when it comes to similarities and beefs and things like that because that was personal. Please let me know if there was some uh, background to uh, Brereton and uh, Yates. Please let me know. 
Look at him. He ran right at him. Boom. I mean, he did that on purpose. No doubt. It was premeditated, was it? You and Malcolm Blake, you put your heads together and said, well, all right, let's fix Dermot up first, Benz. It was a plan. Yeah, that was it. Well, tell us, how, how did you go through it the week before a grand He final, admitted it. How did you actually plan out what you're going to do? We well, actually started probably uh, in round, was it six? Six. Yeah, uh, Princess Park, and uh, I had a very uh, sore testicle for about <laughs> four or five weeks. Mm. Uh, that, was, that was an accident, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's always going to be on. Big ups, man. He admitted that. He admitted it. It was a plan, but it still seemed to me... Like, some players wouldn't be willing to do that plan. There are some players that would have a conscience about something like that. You know? A little bit of a conscience. So, again, I still feel there has to be some background there. There has to be some background there. To choose Mark Yates, and he was like, yeah, I'll do it. There's got to be some background. Just from my own sports knowledge and watching the sports I do, there's got to be some background. Please let me know. That's when a man like Brereton is most vulnerable. Dermot had been pretty good, you know, I mean, he's a great player and uh, he'd been sort of running through huddles and all sorts of things, so I just felt with Paul Couch winning the Brownlow that year that, um, you know, that we didn't need to lose a player early and, and Dermot had bowled over the Who is that, guys? Who is that? Tell year, me, please, so who is that? There was some motivation there from Yates anyhow and uh, just said, look, all I said was, look, if he comes running at the oh. center bounce, just make sure you meet him and, you know, protect the blokes in the middle and uh, oh, boy. You know, Dermot kept running and... Uh, Mark hit him, no elbows, no fists, no nothing. A little bit off the ball, probably. The dude kept probably playing. I'm not going to stop that. I love that, man. I love that. Not one of the great memories in footy. I, you know, I think that um, given the time again, I probably wouldn't have done it. Uh, given Mark's time again, he probably wouldn't have done it. Uh, but knowing Dermot, he probably would have. So I'm not quite sure where that was all going to go to, accepting that what Dermot did do was stand up and kick three goals and we got beat by a kick. So... You know, his, his contribution was significant. But if we had to play it again, I, I'm not quite sure where we would have got the players from. So Hawthorne deserved to win. I mean, they were good enough and they were a great team. But, you know, just at the club, I said, well, we've got beaten. Let's put our heads back in our sockets and uh, we'll wear the loser's tag. But it was a very brave game of football, I thought. What's hard for with a kick? Intended to have Oh! Oh! What a hell! Oh! Oh, guys, I'm watching this game in full when we're done with this. Well, not tonight. Hey, by the way, guys, I'm live streaming the New York Knicks. If you're watching this, I'll be on in about three hours live streaming. Drop in. A lot of Aussies are dropping in my live streams for the Knicks and the New York Rangers. Anyway, this guy, look how fast my man's running him. He ain't marking this ball. Bang! Oh, there was Ablett. That was Ablett. Woo! I think that first quarter, everyone seems to think we went to the bash and crash and, and we did a little bit but not, I mean I think both sides did a bit but oh my gosh that's Gary Ablett that's Gary Ablett is it not I'm, I don't know what they look like nowadays but that looks like Gary that's got to be Gary Ablett right the thing that amazed me was Hawthorne's skill the delivery of the ball we, we just couldn't get the ball off them there for about 20 minutes and they really hurt us on the scoreboard and it was a gradual wearing down process that got us back into the game and uh you know, Gary had a sensational first half that probably kept us in the game, really. And then, uh, you know, he kicked another four in the second half, which was handy. But, you know, it was a, it was a high-scoring, free-flowing, and pretty tough game. Okay, maybe that's not Gary Ablett. One thing you guys will get out of me, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I just tell you, hey, man, I didn't know I'm wrong. I look up a lot of stuff, but I don't get it all right. And I might miss something here and there. But you guys, you Aussies, man, you've been... Right here, helpful to me, man. Thank you. I helped me on this journey. I ain't going anywhere, guys. I'm going to be around for years. Doing the luck work against Deer. Have got over the top. Specky! Oh, I love that play. Love it. That was a good Specky. And we're close to the end of the game. And only three goals separates the two sides. Tuck. There's no over the top. Brunch. Bounce favors Brunch. Brunch goes for goal. Ablett, of course. This could be the record number of goals kicked in the grand final at the moment held by Dermot Brewer. Gary Ablett has kicked eight, a chance to kick his ninth. That mistake coming from his brother-in-law, Michael Tuck on the outer flank, the back flank for Hawthorne. Beautiful. He for goal number nine. Oh, that's all. Up towards the 
towards the 50 metre line. The Geelong defence punch it away. Hockey transfers play to the opposite side of the ground. Give me to can't bar. Linda a little late on the scene. Hamilton gathers. Kicks it to Scott. Oh boy. Taking a long time. What is he doing? David Cameron has kicked two. Stop the clock. He wasted valuable seconds. Every second counts in every sport, man. I don't care what sport it is. You're wasting valuable time. And they only lost by, I mean, they didn't lose by too much. They only lost by a handful of points. That was valuable time he left. I don't care what quarter it is either. Valuable. Down to 15 seconds now as play restarts. Geelong must get it immediately. Run down by Flanagan, taken by See that? That's by now it's count. They lock it up again. It looks like it's all over. The cream of back to back minutes. There's all the fear as far as the Hawks are concerned. There's the siren. Nine goals from Adler. The Norm Smith medalist would not be enough to get Geelong over the line. The Cats boasted the most potent forward line in football. Light's decision to move Adler to full forward was a masterstroke, and the star kicked 100 goals three years in a row. It was a whole new role for me, from going from a half forward line to full forward. Um, you know, Malcolm was tremendously. Again, in one of the hardest grand. Guys, valuable seconds. That dude taking forever to kick that goal. They lost by a goal, 144 to 138. Is that correct? Yeah, 144 to 138. Can you imagine if they had an extra 10 seconds there? I'm just rounding the number off. I don't know if he wasted 10 seconds. Maybe he wasted a little bit more, a little bit less. You get the point. You get the point. Imagine those seconds back right there. You're down by one goal. One goal. I'm sure there's many factors why teams lose games, but that could be one right there. Now, man, this game here, they seem like they had a vendetta. Like, they were banging players around on Hawthorne, man. Geelong came out with a physical mentality. They came out in this game with physicality like nobody's business, man. They were going to come out and try to win by beating teams up. And, and, and they came out here fighting. I can't wait to watch the whole thing in full. I'm going to watch it in full. But from what I've read up and now we're seeing these highlights here, whew, wow. I'm blown away, and that's just a small part of this going on. I don't care if I know the score. I'm watching this game. And everything I watch, including the rounds going on right now, listening to the announcers and watching the game, I'm learning so much. So these are all experiments watching. I'll watch the two worst teams in the league play. Right now, that's the Bulldogs and the Hawks. Both of them are, are horrible right now. I watch both of them play because I'm learning so much. Guys, thank you so, so much for helping me out on, my, on this American's journey into the AFL, and I'm loving it, man. This game, you guys are right. This game is amazing. It's incredible. The athleticism is insane. And guys, I don't edit my stuff. If I make mistakes in here, like if that was Gary Ablett, maybe it's not, maybe it is. I don't edit that crap out. I don't edit my own my own mistakes or what I don't know out. Man, I'm a human being, man. I get stuff wrong too, and I don't come on here acting to be perfect. I'm not going to be perfect. I think it's better you just get on here and just go along and do what you got to do. And that's what I do on here. So anyway, guys, again, appreciate it. Please, please check out Basement Squad Reacts. Me and my daughter, Dez, when she shows up, <laughs> when she's not working, we do a lot of music reactions as well. And we've been doing a lot of Aussie videos, including John Farnham and Cole Chisel and so on and so on. Check me out on Twitter and on IG under Johnny Basement. You'll see me right there, guys. Okay, I'm out of here. Subscribe, bell notice, hit that like button. Drop your comments down below, as you guys always do. You'll find the link there as well. I'm Johnny Basement, and I am out.